How's it going? It's Charles Botenstin, and today we're going to be talking about something that is on everyone's mind. And essentially, no pun intended, it's about a book that has a title that, and it actually doesn't look that appeasing. It's known as Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics. And when it came up on Amazon as a recommended read, I was like, eh, I don't think I actually want to read this. And I started going through the reviews, and it, and it had a it had a law of attraction kind of feel. And I don't know if you are familiar with law of attraction. I'm assuming that you've heard of it. Essentially, in one sentence, it's whatever you think about, you attract into your life. So if you think negative things, then negative things happen in your life. And if you if you just think about that for a second. The reason being is that when something happens and you're negative, you look at the negative. When you're positive, you look at the positive. You know, there's tons of stories of the exact same thing happening to a crowd of people and each person obviously through their lens and through their mind interpret the exact same thing that happens. Say a dog bites a child. Ten people see it one person blames the dog, one person blames the child, one person says, let's rush him to the hospital, one person pulls the dog away, one person hits the, uh, yells at the kid, why are you so close to the dog? One person yell, yells at the dog, why'd you bite the child? And it's like the same exact thing happened, but why through the lens of all those people do you have different scenarios? And essentially in the book he explains, it's what you think about is how you feel and then those are the actions that you take and that's why you are in your life or where you are in your life is why exactly where you are in your life. So what in the current situation you are in right now, physically, mentally, health, wealth, every single aspect you have brought into your life. And he was a plastic surgeon in it was a while ago, probably the 50s or 60s, and essentially he goes, he remember, he started thinking about it because he would do plastic surgery on someone's nose or someone had a scar or someone had a, a wart or a mole on their face or they wanted uh, whatever they wanted done. And, he, and after a while he noticed that people would leave and they, though what they wanted change on their face, they he changed they would leave and their self image right after was okay great but then it would go back to normal so then he started thinking about well is it this that's making them this scar that's making them self conscious or is it themselves convincing themselves that this is what's making them self conscious it is an amazing read this is this it listen there's times that it's, the style of writing isn't ideal because it was, it was at a time where it's very specific and as you can tell from the title or from the, the cover of the, the book and, and from the title, the, the guy just gets right down to business and you know I, I've made a declaration that I'm going to read a book a week and I divide the book into the, the pages that I'm going to be reading divided by seven. So, you know, 200 and 82 pages divided by seven, that's how many I read per day. And just to give you a little overview of the table of contents, self-image is what he discusses. And essentially the self-image is so important to your how you view things, but then that's how you take action. So if you see yourself as a fit, healthy person, that's how you're going to act and that's how you're going to be. You know, it, it sounds so simplistic, but it's true. So here's an example. I, going through high school and college, thought myself as a, thought myself, thought of myself as a not intelligent person because I was getting graded and I just wasn't a smart person. And what I noticed is that I just didn't want to learn. So then that wasn't, I didn't conclude that in, in high school and college. I concluded that I was not a smart person. So when bad grades came back, I then convinced myself, oh, here's another bad grade. I am not a smart person. When in fact, I got out of college and I just wasn't applying myself. You hear that all the time. 
they weren't applying themselves. You'll hear about an athlete, like the athlete who couldn't t handle the pressure. They couldn't, they have the talent. And that's the difference is that they, people have the talent, they have the smarts, they have all of the tools, they're just not applying themselves. Why are they not applying themselves? The reason they're not applying themselves is because they feel inside their mental framework Set is just a little bit off. It says they're not good enough to be in the NFL. It, it, they're not good enough to be the leader of their church. They're not, they're not good enough to be the leader of their organization, to be the CEO, to be wealthy, to, to have what they want. And he goes over in here, and, and there's actually one chapter, How to Unlock Your Real Personality, which is amazing. When someone convinces themselves, I'm shy, are they really shy? Oh, like, what, wh who, first of all, it's a word that we have put a meaning to. It's, first of all, it's, it's letters that we made into a word, and then we put a meaning, a meaning to that word. They're shy. So it describes someone, when someone describes someone as shy, that's fine. If someone tells me you're shy, I don't believe that because, or, or it's not true because I don't believe that. That's the biggest thing is when someone says you're not good enough and you go, maybe they're right. When you convince yourself you're not good enough, you're not wealthy, you're not healthy, you're not successful, you're not going to be, if you don't believe it, in this case, how to unlock your true personality, people who believe they're shy will be shy because that's what they've accepted about themselves. So one thing I brought out of this, which is amazing, you have to say, and actually I just got, I got this from Jack Canfield as well. He says, and when you read through this, Jack Canfield, Tony Robbins, uh, a bunch of these, these guys nowadays, Brian Tracy, Les Brown, when you read these older ones, these are the books they read because they bring these principles back. You're like, wow, what a brilliant principle. It was in this book or is in another book just like it. So five out of five stars. So to unlock your true personality, when you say shy, you're convincing yourself you're shy. So instead of say, instead of saying that's, instead of saying I can't do something, say I won't do something. When you say I won't do something, that means that you have a choice and you chose to go down a different path. So perfect example. Um, instead of saying I am not shy, it's it. You're just say I won't be shy, or I won't be outgoing. In other words, you're choosing to be. Sh you're choosing to be shy. You have an option to be shy. You have an option to be wealthy, to be successful. This book is dehypnotizing yourself from false beliefs. A false belief. You know, doing these videos is amazing because it actually reinforces in my mind things that I tell, say to myself. And then I actually, because of this book, catch myself. Why am I saying that I'm bad at something? Why am I saying I can't do something? Don't say I can't. Say I won't do something, which gives it a, a meaning, which I mean, it gives it a choice. Highly recommend it. It's by Maxwell Maltz. Five out of five stars. It's not a quick read. Uh, it's, it, to me, it, it was actually a slow read for me. I, you know, I'm going to say I'm not the fastest reader. And... I've convinced myself that I am now a fast reader because of this book. I've now convinced myself I am a fast reader, and now I am actually, ironically enough, reading faster. Highly recommend the book. Got to pick it up. Join the millions who are already, already, already adding more years to their life. Another thing in here which is amazing is believing you're old. Who, who, it's a number. You know, someone that's 80, someone that's 50, someone that's 30. You know, when, when people say uh, 40 is the new 20 or 50 is the new 30, you know, those are people with a mindset that are younger. I'm, I'm almost 30. I'm, I'm going to be 30. I don't feel old. I don't feel like I need to get married. I don't feel like I need to be doing the things that 30 year olds do. You know, that, that's just a mindset that someone's trying to bring on to you. And if you believe that, then you are now encompassing that. I don't believe I'm old. 
because I'm not. I'm 30. Even if I'm 50, and I know there's 50 year olds or 60, 80, 90, 100 year olds that are going to be reading this. Listen, I used to always feel that I wanted to make it to like 85, 90, maybe not even. You know, I used to say, give me 70 good years, 75 good years. Now I want to make it to over 100. I'm eating better, I'm exercising, things like that. Pick up the book, great book. If you want to follow us, follow me, I should say, Instagram, subscribe to the videos. We do a, I'm going to be doing actually three more uh, books uh, today and managing oneself, the power of focus and the power of full enjoyment, the power of full engagement. Uh, Didn't have the book in it because I travel around New York City without the book cover because then people look at it and they start, you know, asking me about it and things like that. So, I don't travel around with the book cover. But anyway, follow us on uh, Instagram and subscribe to the videos. If you have any books you want to recommend, obviously let me know, and I will certainly read it. Talk to you guys soon.